So why do we keep coming back to our rule? It gives us order, direction, unity, keeps us true to Francis's inspiration. I think beneath that, we have to look at what the uh, purpose, what the need for a rule was in the first place. And it's because we've been given much in this life as Franciscan friars. And it's been good, this life. It's um, kept us here. If it wasn't good, we wouldn't be here. I think it's important, uh, as I was reflecting on this, it became more important that this um, sort of attitude of, of gratitude for what we've been given is reflected in, in the rule that, that holds us together. Um, the rule came about, this, this later rule, as a result of you know, the earlier, the first inspiration that Francis had in the earlier rule was based on his, his gospel ideals, his, um, you know, his admonitions, and, and that was good for, for uh, the time, and it, it kind of thrust the order and, and started to inspire others. But as more brothers came, there needed to be um, establishment of more guidelines, the ministers, uh, the more educated, Friars were looking for more, more, uh, you know, procedures and, and documented guidelines to help to guide the order and and, and keep keep uh, the brothers together. So, you know, it, it held on to uh, Francis's idealism, but in this in this new light, given what what the order had become. So I think again. Um, the historical circumstances behind the writing of the rule are worth reflecting on because they have this undertone of gratitude. For an order that was established 800 years ago and that is still thriving today, it can give us insight on our lives as brothers and what we are a part of. So what were the brothers given, again, that this later rule needed to address? A gospel way of life, a fulfillment of a dream, many new brothers to accompany them on their journey. A position of influence in the world, both attracting and challenging others to live the gospel. A life nurtured by a transformative relationship with Christ, calling them to a deeper experience of his love and fullness of life. <coughs> All these are, I believe, very familiar to us today as we live our lives as friars. We've been given much as we sit here in this chapel together. Our way of life, the living out of our dreams, brothers to walk with, leading others to Christ, and being transformed in Him as Capuchin brothers. It is all a gift. We have much to be grateful for. To see it all as a gift can free us from holding on to what we have as if they were the result of our own efforts. Our pride, our judgments, our resentments, rooted in our perceived self-preservation, to see it all as a gift, we can hold back nothing and give ourselves totally. Chapter 1 opens, as does all the rules of the Franciscan family. The rule and life of the Friars Minor is this, namely, to observe the Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It expresses the gift of faith we have been given and our primary call to respond to this and live the gospel. Chapter 2 gets into more of the specifics that, that the order needed to address at the time, where the earlier rule admonishes the minister to warmly receive inquirers with kindness and encouragement. If they can accept this warm reception without difficulty, then, if he wishes, sell all his belongings and give everything to the poor. But the later rule calls for a more diligent examination. <coughs> what is their knowledge of the Catholic faith and sacraments? Do they believe these things firmly to the end? Do they have no wives or have a wife who has already entered the monastery or taken a vow of continence by authority of the bishop? And are their wives older and maybe undesirable? These are criteria that, that they began to use as they were discerning who to allow into the order. The earlier friars relieved, realized that not everyone was called to be a part of the order. Many people have responsibilities or circumstances that would not be fitting for religious life. 
For me, personally, I can see how many of the choices I made earlier in my life could have resulted in me not being here today. It was for the grace of God that I was uh, saved from, from those circumstances that, that could have prevented me from being here. I'm grateful for this grace and the people who, who led me through there and guided me um, away from paths that could have been uh, brought me down, taken me to a different place. I think this is important to reflect on in our own lives as we see you know, what brought us here. You know, it wasn't just our own inspiration. You know, there were many people who guided us and, and many pe things to be grateful for in our lives that led us here. The earlier friars' habits at first were a source of ridicule and scorn at the time of the later rule. Now, <clears throat> they are set apart as a gospel authority. Chapter 2 ends with the warning not to despise nor judge men whom they see clothed with soft and colored clothes, using dainty food and drink, but rather let each one judge and despise his very self. Are we quick to judge others, maybe who do not live the Catholic values we have been gifted with? Can we out of gratitude share them in such a way that is attractive to others rather than condemning? The rule continues, brothers are to be modest, meek, and humble, speaking uprightly to all. We can be thankful that others invite us to meals with them, into their homes to spend time with them, to eat meals together. As brothers, we can also recognize all that we've been given, our talents, our intellects, our physical abilities, our relational abilities, that allow us to be with others and to serve them. These are all gifts from our Creator, nurtured by our upbringings, those who guided us, and our own response to them. We are called to live the gospel out of this towards the world. If we can see our lives as such from this reception of coming to none of this on our own, confident of our own poverty, the poverty that our Lord himself undertook, which, as chapter 6 proclaims, is that sublime height of most exalted poverty, making us heirs and kings in the kingdom of heaven, poor in temporal things, but exalted in virtue. Let this be your portion, which, which leads into the land of the living. In gratitude, recognizing all that we've been given and all that our faith promises us, our rule tells us we can give ourselves totally to this, beloved brothers, never seeking anything else under heaven, for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.